any initiative like this that clearly has been very carefully planned. Um, there's been a lot of effort put into thinking about how the panel's chosen, what its task is going to be, recognizing even the limitations in terms of it not being clearly linked to a decision-making process. I think that bodes well for the panel because a lot of really careful questions have been thought through and, and addressed. Um, so I think it's a really exciting initiative and, uh, and I, I, I wish the foundation and, and the panel very uh, much success in its work. When I think about meaningful public engagement, I think about engagement that is, is respectful of, of people's time, of their ideas, uh, and that actually is ge geared towards really delving very deeply into their values, not just their top of mind um, atti attitudes and perspectives on a topic, but actually delves much more deeply into the values that underpin those, um, that uh, has a process that is fair, um, that is uh, very credible and legitimate and that um, respects all viewpoints and attempts actually to get at all viewpoints through the, the, the process that's used. Many different processes can be used or structures can be used to achieve meaningful public engagement, but they need to have those very you know, key elements to them. The move towards, and I guess the, the um, excitement, enthusiasm about pub deliberative public engagement um, comes from, the, again, the shift from the kind of t traditional approaches which have uh, been based on public opinion, attitudes, focus groups to some extent too, but not as much about providing information to the participants before they actually weigh in on the issue. So many people come to um, thinking about issues from very different perspectives with very different levels of information and, and knowledge. And so a deliberative process is really focused on trying to ensure that their knowledge base is, is there, is solid, so that they can actually uh, contribute in a, in a meaningful way that's, that's informed. So that's, that's a really important part of it, uh, as well as this uh, idea of actually looking at the values that underpin their pers perspectives and attitudes, and not only those top of mind uh, attitudes. So that shift to deliberation, and obviously deliberation means you know, this idea of, 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 of thinking meaningfully and, and carefully and, and deep reflection on issues. And, and so deliberative public engagement processes would have those features as well. I think often when um, citizens come into a process like this, they're looking to, to see some immediate effects or, or impacts, right? They, they're excited, they say, wow, this is my opportunity, I'm gonna actually you know, make change. And I think it's really important for those who are organizing these kinds of processes to be really clear about what they can promise in terms of this will have an impact on, on this decision or this is going to feed into a, a larger process that will not necessarily result in you know, a definable um, impact. And I think people, my, my experience is that participants in these kinds of processes are very understanding of that and they don't expect necessarily, I mean they may wish to see their input actually make a, a tangible uh, difference in terms of policy or some change in the decision, but I think they're realistic as they learn more and I think the key is that they want to know what it is that their input is going to be, uh, how, it, how it is that their input is going to be used and that they can show, they can um, be taken through a series of, of uh, decision stages that ultimately might uh, result in some, uh, some decision being taken. So in the case of, of, of Panorama and what it's designed to achieve, I think my understanding is you're being very clear that, that we don't actually have a set decision that this is looking to in, in, uh, inform or change, but through the process of changing the whole culture of the way that we actually deliver healthcare services in Ontario, that by bringing a group like this together through the panel, hopefully there will be some um, impetus to respond to what comes out of, uh, of, of the panel's deliberation. So that's my understanding. It is very difficult to actually trace this from one from beginning to end. There hasn't actually been a lot of research done, and I think this will be a really nice area to do uh, work on to actually follow citizens who participate in these kinds of processes to see what happens. So where do they go? Do they actually get involved in more of their you know, local community activities? Do they get involved in similar kinds of panels elsewhere? I know that there's a huge interest in carrying it on. In some cases, I've heard people say, I don't want to waste, you know, 
um, this incredible opportunity I've had by just having it stop here. I want to carry on. In some of my own experiences where it's been a time-limited deliberative process, at, at the end of two years they've said, please, can we carry this on? Can you find a way to continue the project? And because they, they develop skills, right? They Not only are they learning new things, but they're developing skills. This uh, investment in them, in learning how to do deliberative dialogue, uh, I think leads them to say we, we should really pay back in some way. And so that's the biggest um, um, you know, reward I think uh, participants gain from their experiences in these, in these types of processes. On the one hand, having something mandated in legislation is always um, strengthening in that you can go there and you can use that legislation to say, actually, we have to do this. And so it actually requires, um, if it is a mandated citizens council or panel where there's a deliberative process in, in place, then it has to happen, right? That deliberate, that panel has to be created, it has to deliberate, it has to you know, inform. What I've seen in my experience is that can be a, a huge lever to, to push for um, uh, effectiveness in terms of it really making a difference. But I think what's equally important is that you've got leadership in place who are actually going to make sure that this is taken up. And so you can have legislated public engagement that doesn't go anywhere because there wasn't actually that commitment at the highest level to make sure that something happens with it. Uh, uh, it whereas you can have, you know, in more and more, less formally, uh, um, you know, legalistic requirements for public engagement that are just as successful in actually making change or in informing change because you had leadership in place that was uh, very much committed to seeing something done with the input. Well, I mean, the UK one is one that we talk about a lot because it was one of the first on the scene in healthcare in terms of, you know, really saying we're going to bring this uh, citizens' council together to deliberate. And, and it was also uh, innovative in its use of that deliberative methodology from the very beginning. So very high profile, tremendous attention being paid to it, and it's been very influential because we've now got examples in Canada of similar kinds of councils being structured. I, th I wouldn't want it to uh, suggest, though, that it has, a, it has been you know, perfect. Um, there actually have been very uh, critical um, uh, evaluations done of the process. I think, again, by and large, very um, uh, pleased uh, participants. Um, they've been able to show some uh, differences in terms of the input from the council actually being used in various uh, um, decision-making processes. But I think it's still a work in progress. I think a lot of this is still very much a work in progress because Ultimately, um, these are, are deliberative spaces that are very uh, new to many people, and so it can take a long time for people to actually become very good at this kind of work. And the content, right, in healthcare is often very, very complex, and so it actually takes a lot of time for people involved in these uh, uh, councils or panels to really gain the knowledge, not only content knowledge, but also the skill set to actually um, be able to, to do this work very, very effectively. And you also need that push on the other side from the decision maker perspective to really want to use and to see how they can actually use the input that they gain from these kinds of processes.